prices for goods and services, as you guys know, are all based on uh, the components of yeah. those things, right? Yeah, what, are, what, are, what are the ingredients cost? What's the labor cost? What is the energy cost? The And what makes it particularly problematic is that energy underlies every single one of those, yeah. right? Great point. Gr- yeah, r- rising yeah. energy prices increase my uh, commute expense, which means I need, uh, you know, I'm now looking for relief in my wages for my employer so that I can afford, well, I drive three miles to work, so I'm a bad <laughs> example, but I could walk if I really needed to. Uh, but, you know, hypothetically, yeah. that's true. So again, speaking of pipelines and Biden, um, liberal uh, energy policies is bringing the return of Obama era gas prices, mm-hmm. where we see up gas prices at the highest on record since 2014, wow. the last time Biden was in office. So we're looking at three dollars and three cents a, ga- a gallon nationwide. California's 427, New York's 308. More of the uh, redder states, are, of course, are a lot less. But, Partly because uh, taxes are low in those red states. <laughs> Thank you very much. Help, uh, yeah, that accounts for some of it, at least. And, uh, you know, we're still seeing, we're still seeing uh, shortages. Mm-hmm. Gas stations are still closed throughout the southeast because of the Colonial Pipeline, pipeline pack, uh, Hack. And, uh, but that really speaks to a larger issue on inventories. Uh, Bloomberg pointed out that the inventories around Chicago and Minneapolis are the lowest they've seen since 1992. Mm. And around New York and Philadelphia, it's the lowest inventory, gasoline inventory on record since uh, for seven years, the past seven years. Wow. So there's real a real critical uh, mass coming up here where you think prices are bad now, just wait till the end of the summer. So what's driving that, right? So we've had, uh, 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 for the last 10 years, we've been pretty energy efficient, especially after 2017. 2017, coincidentally enough, marked the first time America beat Saudi Arabia in the amount of oil mm. produced. Right. And ever since then, we've been going off like a rocket ship. Why is that? Well, a lot of looser environmental laws to allow more fracking and a heck of a lot more pipeline being built. We talked about the 1.3 million pipelines in the ground today. Well, 33,000 of those miles came under the Trump administration, mm. which allowed a lot more oil to flow freely, more inexpensively, which it basically ends up in our pump a lot cheaper. Now we see actions like the Keystone Pipeline being cut down, other requirements, more taxes that are squeezing the already tight supplies, and it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of critical. So it's um, where are we where are we headed? I guess is my first question. It's uh, uh, so with a lot fewer pop- pipelines coming in the next couple of years, Joey. Uh, what do you think that bodes for the uh, larger economy? Well, I have a funny story. I was in California over the weekend. Uh, and I just want to share with you what gas prices were there. I had to take a picture because it was so insane. Regular was four seventy a gallon. Wow! Hmm. Took a picture of it in California over That's the weekend. That's a really good reason not to go yeah. to California. <laughs> yes, um, I mean, if you needed yeah. another one. So it's just insane. So, but the path we're going down just isn't sustainable. Right? It's not. Um, if you're if you're rich. It's fine. If you can buy an electric car, it's fine. But if you're regular people, like the majority of Americans are, probably the majority of people that voted for Joe Biden, I'm not sure how you survive uh, Joe Biden's America. I and mean, with all the cash that we have pumped into the economy through these um, you know, economic stimulus payments, you know, I didn't need a stimulus payment. I haven't been out of work for the past year, but I got one. And then we paid people to stay home. We gave them an extra $300 every week. And then we have disastrous job reports. We wonder why no one's going back to work and we have rising inflation. Uh, it's it's not good. And uh, higher gas prices hit poor Americans the hardest. Rising food prices hit Mer- uh, poor Americans the hardest. Rising home prices hit middle class Americans the hardest. Um, so yeah, I just think I think we're headed down a, a terrible path that the uh, the middle class is going to bear the, the brunt of in America. It's, yeah. it's bad. Prices for goods and services, as you guys know, are all based on uh, the components of yeah. those things, yeah. right? Yeah. What, are, what, are, what are the ingredients cost? What's the labor cost? What is the energy cost? The And what makes it particularly problematic is that energy underlies every single one of those, yeah. right? Great point. Gr- yeah, r- rising yeah. energy prices increase my uh, commute expense, which means I need, uh, you know, I'm now looking for relief in my wages for my employer so that I can afford, well, I drive three miles to work, so I'm a bad <laughs> example, but I could walk if I really needed to. Uh, but, you know, hypothetically, yeah. that's true. Uh, even if you're taking an Uber or taking public transportation, all of those things depend on energy. Yeah. Every ingredient, every component, every widget that gets added to anything 
uh, energy goes into the creation of those things. And so not only does rising energy cost uh, affect all of those things individually, they rise to a level where uh, every component gets that gets a higher price. All mm. of those components go into that final good or service that goes to the consumer. Yep. And the consumer is the one who's really paying through the nose mm-hmm. for this uh, Biden policy. So, uh, I, you know, I, I don't. I, I, you asked what you know. What are what are some of the what does this bode for the larger economy? I, it, nothing good. I think it bodes pretty well for Republicans in twenty twenty two and twenty twenty four. But I, yeah, for, uh, for the economy, I uh, yeah, it's I, I, I'm very nervous. I know uh, uh, a number of large uh, financial advisor firms. Uh, my wife's a financial advisor, so I'm you know we're I'm always involved in these talks. Are, are saying uh, next year. Basically, you know, we probably, it was probably strong enough to get us through 2021, but 2022 is uh, is looking ugly. So oh. we'll see.